Okay, hey there calculus folks. We are trying to wrap up uh, this section on linear approximation using calculus techniques. <clears throat> We've talked more about linearization and now I want to compare that to the idea of change in notation where we call it differential. Uh, again, a linear approximation. Uh, in this case, the simple example I want to use is I think from uh, number 26 in our text, which is Suppose we have, and I will write in black for linearization, y equals radical x, okay? And we've got, in this case, I'll review this with linearization first just to compare the two. And we're going to say, suppose we're going to use this to find radical 2, okay? Uh, decimal approximation for radical 2, and our simple nearest convenient point is going to be the point 1 comma 1, all right? So if you remember, what we do is we simply take the derivative of this. So y prime, we can think of it also as f of x, f prime of x is equal to, well, we've been doing this all the time, so it's going to be 1 over 2 radical x. Okay, so just put that into exponential form and use the power rule, and you got it. Well, we now have the slope of this. And uh, actually, it would be useful, I think, to, to think in terms of a picture at this point, too. So if we go to our our graph of this, you're just going to get a nice square root function. Let's call that point right there is 1 comma 1. And then I'm going to approximate it here at 2. Okay, but I've got this tangent line that's coming along like this. And I've now found that, well, at 1, when I plug that in, f prime of 1 is 1 half. Okay, so there it is. M my slope is one half. So I have a point, one comma one, I have a slope, I can put this into point slope form and then modify it and that gives me the linearization. L of x then is going to be equal to one half and then my x minus the point one and then it would be minus one over here but it's plus one over here and so this is the linearization okay and then if I plug in what I'm interested in finding is when it's 2, so L of 2 then is equal to 1 half 2 minus 1 plus 1. Well, what does that equal? That's just 1 and 1 half, so that's 1.5 to write it in decimal terms. There's my linear approximation of the square root of 2, and we know that really it's 1.414, so it's off by a bit, but I've gone quite a ways beyond where I would expect my window of real accuracy to be. Okay, but now to compare this to the idea of a differential, all right? Here we're sort of going back to the way we develop the concept of a derivative and really thinking about what does it mean to, to compare change in x and change in y. And we're going to call this the delta x. It's also dx. Here, this amount, and again, if you sort of think about our original notation, which I can do here, that if we have y prime, that's really taking the derivative of y with respect to the variable x, okay? And we also call this then f prime of x, if our function is f of x. Um, so we've often used these sorts of inter notations interchangeably, and this is where it's helpful to think about the way this notation evolved is really a comparison between small changes in y over small changes in x. And we really talked about that concept back when we developed the idea of what is continuity. And that is that when something is continuous, you can expect that a very small change in y will result, or a change in x will result in a small change of y. And by comparing these, we get that idea of a slope. So here we have it. So the differential is really when we break this apart as a fraction and multiply this side by dx, we can say that the small change in y is going to be that slope, f of x times my dx. I've multiplied both sides by dx. So this is the differential form of our linear approximation. Okay? So we can write this in this form very simply by taking that derivative that we've already found and saying, therefore, that differential of this is 1 over 2 radical x and then dx, okay? Well, if this is dx and this is my example 2, what is the difference from 1 to 2? Well, that's just 1. So again, I can get my linear approximation by just plugging in 
And if I'm at 1, it's going to be 1 over 2 times 1, and then times 1 again. So this tells me that the change in y, this amount here, is my, d, is my change in y. This is the dy. Actually, this right here is the dy. Uh, no, this is the delta x, sorry. Sorry, delta y, delta y. And so I'm trying to find my linear approximation. That's the dy, and that's right there. I'll keep my color straight. So that's just one half. So I can take and say, well, if this is a, in a change in one half, I add that to my original amount. So one plus one half gives me that same 1.5, okay? A lot of times we're just interested in what is the discrepancy that we're adding on or subtracting, all right? So um, a simple problem in the book will be in 24b, it's write the linearization of uh, the square root of 1 plus ln, and I'll make it x. So the square root of 1 plus the ln of x. Sorry, so what is the differential form of this? Well, we take the derivative and we think of this as dy dx then, and taking the derivative of this, let's just go carefully, this is a little bit of a review problem, it's going to be 1 half, then the derivative, this is the derivative of the outside, not messing with the inside, so there it is unchanged and then it's to the minus one-half. Then I take the derivative of the inside, which that's zero, and then that's one over x. So I can tidy this up and write this as one over two x times the square root of one plus ln of x, okay? So then the uh, differential form of this is simply writing it like we did before, dy equals one over two x square root of 1 plus ln of x, and then times dx, okay? So you just simply write that. That is all they want, the differential form of this linear approximation. Okay, so now it has applications when it comes to actually working with measurements of things. It's a handy way to deal with error. So in, in problem number 28, we're supposed to imagine a circular disk that's been measured to a radius of 24, and an error that's plus or minus 0.2. I don't know what the units are, centimeters or something like that. So can we find then the corresponding error in the area of this disk, all right? So if this is our circular disk, and there's our radius, r equals 24. We find the area by pi r squared. So dA dr then is just the derivative of this, and that's 2 pi r. And then the uh, differential form of this will be, again, just move the dr over, we get dA is equal to 2 pi r and then dr. Well, what good does this do us? Well, this deviation in r is really the error that we could have in our measurement, all right? So I can fill in these things that I know and say, well, this is equal to 2 times pi times 24 times the error is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, okay? And that will give us our error in our uncertainty in dA. Uh, let's see, 0 0.2 times 24 is going to be 4.8, doubled is 9.6 pi, okay? 9.6 pi in terms of absolute amount, or you know, an actual number is really close, I think, to 30. So you'd say plus or minus about 30 units over the total amount of area, which you can work out the math. I think it's going to be, what is that, um, pi r squared, so pi, 24 pi, about 1800, 1806, something like that maybe. Quick check my math. Um, and you can work out that as a percentage. You can also go back, though, to this stage right here before we filled anything in and say in percentage terms it's going to be over the area, which is pi r squared. And you can cancel an r and cancel the pi and say that it's going to be 2 over r times 
dr, which in this case means it's 2 over 24 times 0.2. 0.2 is 1 fifth. 2 over uh, 2 fifths, that's going to be 1 uh, sixtieth. All right? And if you go back and convert the original, the original error right here, um, that is 0.2 over 24 which is 1 1 20th, which is a very nice way of showing that when you square something, it's going to go up by a factor of 2. When you cube something, it's going to go up by a factor of 3. You can uh, use that as a rule of thumb for figuring out error when you've got uh, simple geometry like that. Okay? Hopefully that's helpful. Thanks a lot.